Hello everyone, it's Farkad here. And in this video of the forest, I'm going to provide you with a beginner's guide. This is going to cover all, all the basic stuff. Surprisingly, I've never made one of these. Now, with a plane crash at the start, you can skip it. There's no benefit to watching the cutscene at all. Now, there is about eight spawn locations in the game that you can start at. Some are better than others, though there are a couple of spots that are preferable to start. Though to get these spots, you're just going to have to keep starting the game. Now, where I started here is actually the best place, I believe. Now, here's the first step. The first item you pick up gets assigned to the slot. So that's number one. If I pick up a soda, that goes to number two. I don't have enough items to show you. But the reason I'm telling you this is because I used to run to the back of the plane and pick up all the stuff here, right? All the soda and that. And then I'd pick up the plane axe. And then what would happen is that the plane axe would be assigned to number two and I'll press number one to get my weapon out, but I accidentally drink a soda when I wouldn't need to. All the plane meals, soda and booze, everything on here except the passenger list respawns when you save and exit and return to the game. And there's a booze in there. I think I've already picked that up. So you don't need to eat all the meals. You could probably come back and get them if you need them. So like I said, save and exit and all the stuff will be here. Now this mechanic makes it quite enticing to build near the plane, though I actually highly recommend against it because... The plane is on a patrol route, and you see that's the cannibal village right there. The enemies are going to patrol more through here, and it's going to be a lot more dangerous. Now, I don't know what type of mushrooms they are. I think they might be jack. Yeah, those are jack mushrooms. Now, it's not a big deal on normal mode. As you can see, it's not really doing much damage. Down the bottom right is your stats. Red is health. Droplet is water, and the stomach is hunger, so they're pretty obvious. The light blue is your stamina, so that uses up while you're running and swinging your weapon. And the other one is energy, which is like long term your max stamina is only as good as your max energy and energy is pretty easy to get from sleeping eating drinking most things water doesn't provide it though those are geese those are very hard to get i wouldn't recommend trying to shoot them down if you do shoot them down you manage to record it <laughs> that's a gem what you can do and this is a bit gimmicky if you hit the hostess a few times you can take the outfit from her body i don't know why you need an axe to remove an outfit but yeah and that places that on you can change the outfits down here it's purely cosmetic it doesn't do anything at all the stewardess outfit you can run around in a dress it's the only dress in the game that the player can walk around in. and that respawns too you can only hold five outfits at the moment they're planning on adding a wardrobe it's not in the game yet which would probably allow us to store our outfits so you're going to drop outfits when you've got too many now when you start there's heaps of suitcases around on normal mode and i think hard mode there's a lot of suitcases on hard survival there's only like two or three so to open them you just hit them with a weapon an electrical tape that's the best item you can find in a suitcase you really want to find that at the start you can open two suitcases at once if you're very proficient you push them next to each other like this <laughs> so you know you're a pro oh that was a berry bush because i accidentally hit it it's gone so it will respawn when i save an exit though it's gone for now i can't get the berries off it this is chicory which is actually good for energy. These are blackberries. You can collect all the berries in the game once you get a berry pouch, which requires two rabbit furs. And getting rabbits can be a bit difficult for new players. You can eat those on the go. These are effigies. I'm not really going to go into what they mean, though you can hit them and get resources from them. The main resources you want are the skulls and cloth. Mainly the cloth, because you can carry unlimited cloth. So you can walk around and get all those. And these are blueberries. These are safe too. Now there's two berry types that are poisonous. There's the white berries and the twin berries. Well, the white berries are called snowberries and the red ones are called twin berries. They're poisonous. Like I said, they won't do much to you in normal mode, but on hard survival, I think you only got to eat four or five and it will completely drain all your health and it will kill you. Now, if you press B and go up to here, this is your stats. A lot of this information isn't shown on your HUD, but because I ate those berries, I got infected. So I'm going to need to find aloe to heal. Weight does not matter in normal mode. You're never going to go above or below it. It's only relevant to hard survival. Sanity is really nothing in this game at this stage. Once it gets below 90%, you can build your own effigies and light them on fire and it can scare cannibals away. They're pretty useless though. Athleticism increases the amount of stamina you regen and also increases your move speed. This is really good. And it's actually quite easy to raise. I think it's an hour and a half running, sprinting, or 25 minutes underwater. You gotta have your head underwater and you can't be using the rebreather and it will raise it by one. Well, it actually raised by 10. It's complicated. I got a video on it, though this stuff's um, quite complicated, especially when you're first starting. Strength increases the amount of melee damage you do. Has no effect on ranged weapons. But because I'm infected, it's lowering my strength. Now, you'll probably see these villages a lot, and you'll probably think, oh, I should stay away from them. Uh, not really. 
when you start near them, there's no one in them. So if I was to start somewhere else and come over here, then most likely would be some enemies here. But you should come over here and raid them all and just take all the goodies. Now these mushrooms here, they're safe. I think they're puff or something. I can't remember. You'll learn by their colors, red and white spots. Those are the bad ones. And those orange ones that I've seen before, but they look a lot like chanterelles. So these are jack mushrooms, I believe. Now, if you attack a suitcase, it actually uses stamina. I don't know if that matters to you. What you can do is make a weak spear, which is just two sticks. And if you hit the ground with this, oh, there's a plane going overhead. That doesn't mean anything. I think it's just for something. I don't know. I can't think. <laughs> all right. So if I hit the ground with this, it doesn't use any stamina at all. So it can be maybe a more efficient way of getting suitcases, but it's not a really big deal. All these herbs, you can carry 10 of them as a max. They can be mixed together to make other things. If you want to get leaves, you just attack any of these bushes, it will give you leaves. Best way to get leaves is with a stick. Now, there's a few weapons you can make right off the start because the Planex isn't very good. So it's your basic starting weapon. It does the job. It's got very short range, its stamina usage is quite high, its damage isn't very good, and it's not very good at cutting down trees. Here's some weapons you can make right at the start. Because I started next to those effigies, I'm able to make a crafter club. This is actually probably one of the best weapons you can make from the start. Does a lot of damage the block has got on it. Though it does swing quite slow. The next is a upgraded rock. Now this one's okay. It does a lot of damage, but you can't block with it. It was originally designed to be a silent weapon so you can do stealth kills. Next one is a crafted bow. Though you're going to need arrows for this one, which you're going to need feathers to get ammunition for it. The one that you really want at the start is... Uh, slingshot that's why you want the electrical tape if you place an item over the inventory and place your thing over the cursor the thing over the cursor the cursor over the cogwheel jesus it will tell you what ingredients you can use to make things so the slingshot it needs a tape a cloth and a stick now this is a weapon you really want at the start on playstation i believe you can only have two items in your Backpack, so it's easy access, but on PC you get four. My system is that I usually have an axe in number one, a fast swinging weapon in number two, ranged weapon in number three, and I'll probably put the berry pouch or spear in number four, I usually swap in between. So I press number three, that's in the number three slot. Now I've got no small rocks whatsoever. These are a little too big to use in the slingshot, as you can see. What you can do is I'm gonna make a upgraded stick, and this is what I'd usually set to number two. Just a fast swinging weapon, usually good for getting sticks. Ah, I seem to have got a bug here. So if you hit the ground, there's a chance that coins and rocks can spawn. Coins are rare, rocks are not. This is actually a good way to raise your strength, but it's quite boring. I think with this one, you just have to put it on the thing. Yeah, it removes it. That's a rare bug, that one. Okay, I've got enough rocks now. Now this is a slingshot. It's actually very easy to use because it's got an area of effect. If you think you've missed it, you've probably actually hit it. It's weird. Yeah, try and get every suitcase you can. Because they're rare and they don't respawn, I believe. In caves, they do. The place that I call the Fertile Lands is down there. Kind of see where the two rivers go off there and off there? It's just in that patch there. It's nice and flat. There's heaps of berries, herbs, animals, and everything. Across the river, there's heaps of sticks and trees. Just keep in mind that this area that we're going to cross is heavily patrolled. Your chances of running into enemies here are quite high. There's another lizard there. See, get the slingshot and you're going to have no trouble getting animals. The slingshot was quite a late addition to the game. Before that, you had to use the crafted bow for hunting, and that was much more difficult. There's a rabbit. You can chase after him. Yep, I got that. See, hunting is very easy with a slingshot, though it's only good for small animals. If you want to get deer, you're going to have to get good with the weak spear, and that rhymes. So if you want birds, hit them like that. There's another lizard. I'm not used to normal mode. On normal mode, there's a lot of animals. Keep in mind that all this meat I'm collecting, I can only hold three lizards and three rabbits and four generic meat. I haven't got that yet. And three fish. And that does go off. So you really want to build a drying rack. Now, because I'm... S okay, that was the enemies there. They're here already. There's one. Now, keep your distance from them and they most likely won't attack you. They will follow you, though there's a good chance that they won't attack you, especially on the first day. Hostilities are low. Now, as I'm running down here, this is cave here. Keep this one in mind. A good way to keep it in mind, or to remember where it is, is you open up your survival guide. Still can't navigate this thing for crap, eh? Place that, and then it's marked. Though I've got to have it switched on. If I go to options and gameplay, show overlay icons and group them together, that will constantly be marked for me. I know where that is. This changes the color of your blueprint. Default is white. Though I just like blue. I don't know why. I just kind of picked it up and had them changed. Allow cheats is only for PC. This allows you to use console commands. Regrowing trees, that means that 10% of all trees you cut down will regrow, providing the stump is still there. If you remove the stump, it won't grow back. Allow building destruction means that the enemies and you can destroy your buildings. Turn it off if you're struggling too much. 
And full PvP damage, that's kind of relevant to PvP, obviously. There's no official PvP mode, you've got to make your own. With this map marker, stick marker, I would put one near the plane before you leave it. So I'm going to quickly run back up and place one. The AI in the game has designated that they're going to come to the plane on the first day. So if you hang around here, you're going to see enemies. And they're on patrol routes, especially right next to that. This is not the best place to build. I do not recommend building near a plane. So you could change it to, say, blue. I'll change it to blue because the plane's got a bit of blue on it. There's these geese again. So I'm going to run down to the fertile lands, which is down there. See that map marker? I can see where that cave entrance is. And you can go there and you can get the katana, which is a very good weapon on normal mode and good for beginners, though it is terrible and hard and hard survival. Its damage is too low for how strong the enemies are. So I'd recommend staying away from it and getting the modern axe. That's just me. Katana's popular. I suppose it is a sword. Swords are pretty cool. So we've seen enemies here last time and we ran away and they seem to have lost us. Oh, there's a lot of rabbits around here. I've run out of stones. <laughs> That's most unfortunate. Oh, also, when you're covered in blood, the way to get blood off you is to either wait for it to rain, stuff that, or you just go into water like that, and it will slowly disappear. When you're covered in blood, if you take damage from an enemy, you're more likely to get infected. And the harder the difficulty, the more the higher of a chance that is of happening. Now, this lake here, this is actually a lake. I thought it was a river for ages, but it's actually technically a lake. This is a water source. That's three lizards. Wow. <laughs> You've got a slingshot, lots of ammo. You're not going to struggle at all. If you pull it back and you want to let go of it, just press G. I don't know what number that would be for PlayStation. Oh, no, I missed him. It'll just save your ammunition. It's basically item that puts things away or drop button. Okay, so you can get across here without touching the water. Because you're going to get your logs and that. If you're going to build here, this is the fertile lands right here. And I'll show you it in a second. There's so many sticks over there and trees. It's crazy. And enemies can't get to you across here unless you provoke them and they bug out and run through the water. You're going to be 100% safe otherwise. What I like to do is just build up a bit further so they don't see my base. Anyway, that's enough for this video. In the next one, I'm going to show you how to set up a small base with all the essentials that you need. I'm also going to cover why you should build here, essential items that you should make, food, water, energy, etc. If you've made it here so far, you're pretty safe. Anyway, if you like this video, make sure you like and subscribe. Cheers.